Welcome back to the workshop. Last time we were here testing something, I believe it was how many case fans do you need and in what position. Today, we're gonna to be doing another cooling investigation video. This one is gonna be based on cable management. So we're gonna look into uh, how much it actually affects your cooling. Now there's a little bit of a problem here, which is where most cases these days are actually pretty damn good and have a lot of space behind the motherboard and have like very clear ways that you're supposed to route the cables, which isn't in places that would affect the cooling. So you're probably fine. But this is more of an investigation as a whole. Sometimes you'll see comments online where someone will be like, ah, your cooling's going to be terrible because you left a few cables going in front of those fans. So we're going to check that out. I don't know the answer yet. Let's test everything live. Intel brings DDR4 to the mainstream with their new Core i7-6700K and Core i5-6600K processors. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Okay, so test one is going to be, uh, well, pretty good in terms of cable management. Like, this should be our benchmark for clean cable management. It's not the best that has ever been done, but it's at the point where I think it's not going to affect the cooling in any way. So this is pretty bare. In terms of setup for cooling, we have a Hyper 212 Evo. Finally, I'm not putting in a T4 and pretending it's a 212 Evo. Thank you at Matt Grimes5 on Twitter for sending this to me. By the way, he mailed that to me directly because he's tired of me complaining about not having one. So there's one fan on there. There's one 140 millimeter fan in the front. There's a 140 millimeter fan in the back. And there's two 120 millimeter fans in the top. So this will be our base benchmark for how this computer is able to perform with pretty good cable management. We'll, we will then record its numbers and then I'll start messing with the cables more and making it messier and messier and just see how far the rabbit hole goes. So I've got the case all closed up and now I'm doing some testing. So this is gonna be run for about 10 minutes total. I'm running Furmark on the GPU and recording temperatures of the GPU using MSI Afterburner. And then I'm doing a system stability test with IDA64 in order to push the CPU. So this should heat everything up and get us to a relatively, hopefully high number. Um, although this isn't a particularly hot graphics card and the Hyper 212 Evo is probably gonna do fine because nothing's actually overclocked. And then uh, we'll start throwing more cables in there and messing around. Okay, so results of the first tests are in. Again, this is more just a benchmark for the rest of the benchmarks. This is where like, okay, there's no real cable obstructions going on. So our CPU is at about 50 degrees and our GPU is at about 82 degrees. So we're gonna document that, make the cables a little bit worse and move on. Okay, so I've added some cables. I haven't added an insane amount of cables. I have three big thick ones going across the front. I have one going kind of through the middle. And then I have one placed as a pseudo, not very well managed eight pin going like across over the power supply by the back of the CPU cooler and then up to where the eight pin placement would be. I don't expect this is gonna affect much, but I haven't tried it yet. So let's figure it out. Okay, so this one's good to go. Well. Okay, let's be clear. If you're building your own system, don't leave your cable management that crappy. But it's good to go for this test, for what I need it to do right now. So, walking over to this screen, I'm now gonna set the test back up. So yet again, fur mark for the GPU stress test, and then starting IDA64 for the CPU. Another 10 minutes, we'll record the numbers and see how it did, see if it actually affected anything. I'm kind of thinking it won't, or at least not very much. So that did absolutely nothing. 50 degrees on the CPU still, 82 degrees on the GPU. We're gonna have to make this cable management a lot worse. That's gonna be the next step. I'm gonna add like maybe most of this and we'll see what happens. Side panels on, Furmark is set up, IDA64 is already running. This test is a go. I know I've said this a few times already, but if this doesn't produce a result, there's probably not a ton that I can even do, to be completely honest. And one of the results from this video might be, if you have a standard kind of tower, your cable management probably isn't that important. If you have something like a No 202, or you have that bomb that I built for the fallout build, check that video out up here, then it probably matters, because if you're completely blocking off all of the air inputs, that'll be an issue. But on a big case like this, there's enough just 
open areas that the air is probably going to flow. Um, but who knows? We'll see soon. 10 minute test. Okay, so no change at all. CPUs at 50, graphics cards at 82. So yeah, seems like if you have a mid tower, you're probably fine in terms of cable management. So we're just gonna have some fun. I'm gonna put a Snoopy in there, a Twitch t-shirt, a roll of tape, an iron, and a Santa hat. And maybe that'll do something. God. Oops. I don't know where we're gonna put all this stuff. Now if your cable management is so bad that you put a Snoopy, a Santa hat, an iron, and a Twitch t-shirt in your case, we'll see how much that'll affect your airflow. System stability, oh I forgot the tape. It's okay. While the tests are running, I'm gonna add the last part that I forgot to add, which was the roll of tape. I'm sure Linus is totally okay with all the things I'm doing right now. Nice. Um, I don't know where I can put it. That's probably fine. That's okay. That's probably okay. Now we're rocking. Roll of tape, Snoopy, iron, Santa hat, Twitch t-shirt. Let's do this. Tests are currently running. Let's see how they're going. The CPU is currently at 50 degrees and the GPU is currently at 74. What the hell? What? Okay. Okay, so it's actually doing fine right now, which is really concerning. Uh, I guess we're gonna leave it for 10 minutes and then we'll be back. 50 degrees on the CPU, 82 degrees on the GPU. I put a shirt, a Santa hat, a Snoopy, an iron, and a giant roll of tape along with every single cable that came with the 1200i into a case and it didn't affect anything. Next up is boxes. I'm gonna take all this stuff out, maybe put some of it back in, but use a lot of solid boxes to try to completely block off airflow pathways. I want some numbers to go up. Okay, so we used the box for the CPU cooler and we used boxes for a bunch of water coolers. There's one under here or water blocks, there's one under here, there's one to support that and keep it where it is, there's one blocking the top fans, there's one blocking the black back fans. So basically every single fan has a box currently trying to stop it from being able to work properly, except for, I guess, this one. There. Now there's a Santa hat screwing with that one. Now that we've done all of this, I'm gonna put the case panel back, uh, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, can move that out of the way, all right. I'm gonna put the case panel back on. I'm gonna close this up. I'm already running the tests. I don't even stop them because nothing's changed this whole freaking time. So we're currently running Furmark and currently running IDA 64. I'm gonna come over here and see if there's been any immediate changes. The GPU has not increased in temperature despite having a shirt shoved into it and a box under it but it looks like we have a slight increase in CPU temperatures. Oh good. We'll check back in 10 minutes. We did it by adding four boxes for water blocks, one box for a Hyper 212 Evo, a t-shirt and a Santa hat, effectively putting crap directly in front of every single fan there is. We have gotten the CPU to about 77 degrees and we've gotten the GPU to 86 degrees. Done. So yes, in the end, it took four boxes for water blocks. It took one box for a CPU cooler. It took a t-shirt, a Santa hat, and all of these cables. In addition to the cables that were already inside, which totals a pile that looks something like this, placed into the computer in addition to the required components to heat it up. 
So your bad cable management in your mid tower is probably fine. This didn't include tests for things like really, really small cases or very specific builds like the bomb we have or something like a Node 202 or like an RVZ01 from Silverstone. But yeah, it's probably fine if your cable management is bad. But like, I don't know how to word this because don't just use that as an excuse to have bad cable management. We don't want ugly computers, it's not a good idea. Don't post a build log on the forum and go like, LOL, Luke told me it was okay to have terrible cable management because it's not gonna increase my thermals very much. Just do it properly, everything will be fine. A-Pacer is giving away five A-Pacer AS330 Panther 240 gigabyte SSDs. For a chance to win, check out the link in the video description down below on the Linus Tech Tips forum. Also, they'd like me to call it their Nox DDR4 SODIM memory designed for gaming enthusiasts, graphics designers, and business users. They're energy efficient, consuming 1.2 volts, and it can go up to 64 gigabytes in their total kit capacity. Also, they want me to call it the AS720 SSD. It's dual interface, so you can use it internally or externally. It's 120 gigabytes or 240 gigabytes. That's USB type C or SATA internally if you want to do it that way. Thanks for watching this video. It didn't really come out as I expected, and I don't think the conclusion, or what I had to do to get to the conclusion, was necessarily what anyone expected. But I hope you like watching. Consider supporting. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you disliked it. Um, get subscribed. Consider supporting us through Amazon using an affiliate code. Buy an awesome t-shirt or uh, sweater, wherever I ended up putting that. And yeah. We have other videos. If you want to see the previous video, which was how many case fans do you need, click that. It's up there. And I'll see you next time.